Jamia Amir, uh, welcome to the Cybersecurity Asia 2024 here in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, we met last year uh, at the same conference here. Welcome to Kuala Lumpur. Thank you once again. Uh, now you're based in uh, in Dubai otherwise? Um, I juggle around between Pakistan and Dubai. Yeah. Right, Pakistan is my home. Okay, but you're the CEO with Speaker and CTO with Velix. Uh, and you just gave a fascinating session. We cover a, a space as well. So welcome to My Security TV and we also do Australia in Space TV. That's great. Uh, and you touched on Hack the Sky, exploring satellite vulnerabilities and cyber threats. And uh, you gave some good practical, technical sort of insights into intercepting satellite radio signals uh, and then uh, converting those wave files into the images as well. So very well done. How long have you been doing this kind of uh, approach to looking at satellites, seeing what you can do? You've obviously got that hacker mindset, uh, but yeah, how have you how have you approached it? Wow, that's a good, great badge right there. Yeah, space that's Space and Earth Conference. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Great. So um, I've been I'm not doing this for that long actually. I've been doing this for a couple of months essentially, and uh, it's uh, it's been a fascinating journey of how easy it is to exploit satellite communication. Uh, so I do research, I mean, all over the place and, you know, most of it is garbage, but some of it yep, actually turns yep. out well. I do research on SCADA security. I started off from business logic, web application hacking, then I went to SCADA security, and, you know, then I went to machine learning poisoning attacks, and right nowadays yep. I'm fascinated by how satellites work and how to hack satellites. And, uh, Were you a little bit surprised at how easy it is to intercept? Yes, I am very surprised. Uh, uh, because this is essentially public information yep. and uh, it is very very easy for any attacker to intercept these uh, satellite communications and uh, vice versa uh, convert that into a full duplex communication yep. and uh, essentially or effectively in the near future you know if we don't take the necessary steps right now in no in no time we will have hackers controlling satellites from ground station and their homes now there was a couple of tool sets that you used. One was uh, even available on GitHub and the like. Uh, again, uh, somewhat surprised that there is a sort of groundswell uh, sort of uh, hacker group there that are looking at this. Uh, but on the other side, you're moving into military grade <laughs> communications and sort of the X bands and as, as those changes in the gigahertz range. But the L bands uh, you're looking at. Um, Again, what type of information do you anticipate getting? Most of these are weather-related satellites, but you've had a look at some Starlink satellites as well? Yeah, yeah. Weather-related satellites, Starlink satellites, GPS satellites, communication satellites, television satellites. It's essentially a signal that can be intercepted, decoded, and then retransmitted uh, into a bogus format. So there are four kinds of attacks, right? There's jamming, um, there's spoofing, there's you know the interception, and then there's the command and control attack. So all of these attacks can be effectively carried out on satellite communication networks because they're interconnected and they effectively run on the analog communication, which yep. is the same as it was since the 1970s. Some advancements have been made, but they're not so much so, they're not a leap forward. They're just, you know, little bits and pieces here and there. Yep. We could change the scale, you could change the tone and to secure the signal. But that's not going to work in the long term. Imagine I could, I could, you know, essentially become a script kitty in satellite hacking in, you know, just a couple of months. People who've been doing, what sort of information for the, uh, would the people who've been doing it for years and years now would have access to? So something you were looking at is, can you inject malware in via radio? Mm. Uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think it's, it's technically possible and therefore, because uh, one, of, one of the aspects of what we cover is space cyber. Uh, and understanding and, and even making the space industry aware of cybersecurity, right? They're like any other critical infrastructure, they need to have the awareness. But yeah, I, do you find that they are potentially susceptible to malware injection by radio? Yeah, yeah, they are. I mean, um, people are going to grill at, uh, me on the internet for this. <laughs> I'm still looking at it from a hacker's perspective. but. Uh, um, so in a in a in a hello world scenario, I have been able to successfully use sound waves to uh, to essentially hack into a mobile phone. Um, well, I'm I'm still trying to do that, but the concept is there. Yeah. Like when you transmit a sound wave, it basically gets registered to some sort of temporary memory on a computer, 
and then it gets you know when when it's in there there's a probability that you know you can execute it somehow and same works with satellites and these are RF analog signals right you can transmit anything if there is some point of injection where that particular signal is being decoded and registered in some sort of memory then there's a very probable chance that you can execute malware. And I take it this has been, you know, SDN software defined, uh, sorry, F SDR software defined radio. You can convert uh, files into WAV files and, and back again as well. So, you know, technically yeah. it's possible and yeah. it's just a matter of using your imagination now as a hacker <laughs> as to what you can do exactly. uh, and to what tricks you can get up to. Notorious imagination. <laughs> I try to keep myself on the good side of the law okay. but, so just to publish good research for people to learn and for to for them to secure themselves proactively. Well, it sounds like you do it with the right intention as well, right? So you are there to raise that awareness. Have you worked with any space companies in particular uh, or knocked on their doors to say, hey, can I play around with your equipment? Or uh, even on a bug bounty uh, aspect, have you seen any space related bug bounties? Uh, no, I haven't, not yet. But uh, I mean, this uh, eventually someone is going to come knocking at my door when they start to hear that I'm going to, I'm looking at hacking into satellites. So, I, I, uh, the intention is good, but you know, uh, you need to aware the community and the world more enough that they should ask you for help, not you wanting to help them. That doesn't work. Normally, okay. if you're a, if you're a cybersecurity expert or a technical person, and if you go to tell someone that I'm going to help you, I found this. Chances are they're just gonna, you know, they're, they're not gonna listen to you. Fair enough. So the awareness should be raised in a in a way, in a sense that the people who uh, who run these kinds of companies and enterprises and technologies, they should l listen about you and they should come to you for help. Got it. Uh, we'll look at. Uh Pre-IPSEC interview, there, the Indo-Pacific Space and Earth Conference, we've been holding that in Perth in November. Okay. Uh, and uh, we are running a space cyber aspect to that, uh, including some round tables and some awareness seminars. So that's why I grabbed you, Shamir, other than uh, meeting you previously. We've had you on a panel as well uh, here at this conference, but uh, Hack the Sky, Exploring Satellite Vulnerabilities and Cyber Threats. It's great to see that topic uh, at a cybersecurity conference here in Kuala Lumpur, but thank you very much for joining us on My Security TV and Australia in Space TV. Thank you, thank you, Chris. Thank you, it's been nice. It's been good, great hearing from you, and I look forward to catching you at such events in the near future as well.